The New Zealand Wool Testing Authority has developed a test for staple length and strength of crossbred wool and is now offering it as a commercial test to growers. Despite it being one of the most important attributes of wool and the price it fetches, it's one of the last characteristics still subjectively appraised by wool buyers. NZWTA was established in the mid-60s and was a government department at the time and then was privatised in the late 80s and is currently owned by the Australian Wool Testing Authority. New Zealand Wool Testing Authority's business is really in terms of uh, the objective measurement of uh, greasy wool, scoured wool and right through the entire textile industry. So we're also testing carpets, apparels, uh, as well as the raw material. One of the key factors for the entire industry has been objective measurement. The benefits that that has borne for all of the sectors involved. Starting from the 70s when it really was the prime time for the development of a lot of testing for greasy wool. There has been a number of tests developed uh, through the 70s and 80s and 90s and now this is just an extension of that. Within the marketplace, length is generally seen as the second most important price determinant for greasy wool and it's really the last main parameter that's subjectively assessed at the moment. And we believe that it was important for the industry to move with technology and that we are able to provide the industry with objective measurement for that. We're measuring a number of staples uh, taken from the entire grab sample and from that analysis we are uh, reporting the average staple length. We're also reporting the variation in staple length, uh, the staple strength and the position of break along the staple. There's relevance throughout the entire pipeline. From a grower's perspective, we believe that the objective measurement will certainly ensure that they're paid uh, fairly for their wool and that it's not going to be subsidised with other wool that it might be being blended with. And similarly for the other end of the pipeline, for the processor, we believe that there's a number of advantages for them. Obviously providing objective measurement allows them to become more efficient with their processing. The cost uh, is around about one cent per kilogram based on, a, on an average lot size. So we believe uh, in terms of the marketplace that's very, very cost effective. We see within the marketplace price differentials of up to 50 cents a kilo on adjacent length descriptions. And so we believe by being able to objectively measure that, then we will be able to capture a lot of that benefit financially going back to the grower. We've done a lot of development work in the last 12 months demonstrating its application in terms of that prediction of processing performance and we'll be discussing that with the rest of the industry over the next six months. The test has initially been taken up by three uh, North Island brokers, so Kills Wool, Fred Tate Wools and Wright Wool have taken that up from the outset and we're also getting a lot of interest from other merchants and brokers around the country. Well, traditionally the buyers, and they still do this, will go along, there's a grab sample of wool and they'll um, generally pick it up and pull a few um, staples out to try and ascertain the length. So it's all been done subjectively basically and sometimes they'll make up a consignment and then when it's um, tested after it's been scoured it will fail the, the, uh, the length specifications that are required by the buyer and um, that has a financial cost because it means that the um, contract maybe have to be renegotiated or they'll have to redo the whole thing again. The other side of that too is to try and avoid that, sometimes they'll buy wool slightly longer than they really need just to make sure that they get it right. And so that's an added cost, which if we can eliminate that, hopefully it goes back to the grower. We definitely think there's a benefit to the farmer, that's why we're doing it. Wool values have improved in the last 18 months, um, generally it's on the back of, of more demand and, and less supply. Um, sheep numbers have dropped dramatically. Um, if, if we can eliminate costs out of taking the wool from the sheep back to, to, the, to the yarn, um, which we think this does, well, hopefully that, that reflects in the price that the, buy, that the buyer can pay. The process that we use for uh, testing length and strength for crossbred wool is identical to that that's used for merino wool and has been used for about 20 years. The individual staples are laid out on uh, one of the belts and move one by one through a series of an LED array. That array uh, measures the length of each staple as it passes through and then each staple is fed into the jaws of uh, the, the strength meter where the staples are ruptured and the forces recorded. 
to determine firstly uh, the strength required and then those two broken staples fall onto the balance and each of those sub-staples are weighed. The actual testing process, once we're measuring them on these machines, they take about three minutes. The uh, staples are spread across multiple instruments, so uh, we're able to determine if there are any issues between uh, measurements, so uh, very precise measurements, um, but there's a, a lot of processes involved in getting to that end point of length and strength. There are certainly different characteristics of crossbred wool compared to merinos. Traditionally, crossbred wool can be a lot longer. We also see a lot higher strength measurements as well than what we would traditionally see in the merino industry. We believe certainly for the industry, you know, any objective measurement is going to be advantageous, providing that it is reliable. And we've spent a lot of time over the last couple of years ensuring that the length test in particular uh, is reliable for everyone and that it does give them confidence. And it's when the, the, the whole industry has that confidence that those returns financially come back to the grower.